Jimmy Durante, Anne Francis, and Hugh O'Brien. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Stolen Symphony, starring Hugh O'Brien and Anne Francis. And now, here is your host, Jimmy Durante. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Stolen Symphony, starring Anne Francis as the angel, and you, O'Brien, has Jerry. Tonight, Family Theater brings you a little symphony, a half hour of restful music. So just relax, my friends, and dream with us as we travel on wings of song to the lands of enchantment far away from the hustle and confusion of the day. Pardon me, I'm sorry to break into the music like this and take over your program, but it's the only chance I'll have to tell you what happened. <laughs> I won't disturb the music much. You see, here's the way it was. This morning at dawn, I was over the Rocky Mountains, flying eastward into the sunrise. Far below, the tracks of the Santa Fe ran like a silver ribbon into infinity. It was an endurance test flight of the new XF-491. And everything was going smoothly when, just like that, something in the engine burst. wasn't any warning. One minute, everything was fine, and the next, she was breaking up like a paper boat in a hurricane. There were two or three terrifying seconds before I could realize what was happening and move into action. The plane was a roaring ball of flame by the time I flew the canopy and pulled the ejection switch. Everything worked. I felt the seat throw me out of the cockpit. I watched it fall away from me before I yanked the ripcord. Then I felt a shock and momentary pause when the chute opened. Then I lost consciousness. I landed lightly on my feet. It was strange, because I was filled with a sudden surge of joy and exhilaration and wonderful love of living. It was wonderful just to stand there and look around at the mountains in the distance and the trees nearby. And then I saw my parachute being blown across the clearing. And that surprised me, because I didn't remember releasing the straps. And then... Then I saw the body, still in the harness, being dragged along the ground after the chute. Panic-stricken, I ran after it and tried to stop the chute by catching the shrouds, but my hands passed through the cords and left them untouched. The chute kept billowing in the wind and dragging after it was the body. Finally, the silk caught in the trees at the edge of the clearing. It stopped. And then I saw the face clearly. It was my own. I knew then that I was dead. I'd really known that from the moment I saw the body. Some of the clothes were burned, but the face was almost untouched. It was strange as I waited and looked. I, I felt that I was waiting for some decision to be made, some judgment that would sum up my life. But there was no court, no witness, no testimony, not even a judge. I stood there alone in the clearing, bending over the partially burned body and looking into my own face. Everything that I had ever done was carved into the lines of it. This was the judgment, the decision. I was judge, witness, and accused. I saw all the evidence and read the verdict in my own face. The face hadn't changed. It looked exactly as it did when I was alive. Every line in it I had put there myself, hour by hour, by thoughts and deeds through the long years. But now, I knew what the lines meant.
It was like looking into a mirror and knowing what kind of a guy I really was. Well, not someone to be damned, I knew that. But I didn't think I wanted to go to heaven looking that way either. And then suddenly, suddenly beside me stood a beautiful young lady. She was dressed in blue denim trousers and plaid shirt. Her hair was tousled. She smiled greatly when she spoke. How are you, Jerry? Oh, I'm all right, I guess. Congratulations. Congratulations? For what? Well, we've done a pretty good job. We? Why, yes, we. Yeah, but I, I've never seen you before. Oh, I've been around with you 24 hours a day for 23 years. I'm an angel. You're an angel? Mm-hmm. Well, do all angels have red hair? Only some of us. The seraphim are mostly blonde when they appear. Don't you like red hair? I'll change it. Oh, you mean that... Hey, it's black. Better that way? Uh, uh, no. It's better red. Mm-hmm. I like red myself. You mean you can change it to any color? Don't mind appearances, Jerry. Colors and shapes and distances are only accidents. Yeah, yeah, I know, but... Well, you look like... Just like an ordinary girl. Well, certainly. Angels can change into any form they wish. Just name it. Oh, that's all right. You're fine just the way you are. Thank you. Say, does the Lord stand for that? I mean, <laughs> angels turning into flaming redheads? <laughs> oh, Jerry, you don't know him very well. That's why the world's so full of variety. He loves it. I've been living close to him for, well, almost a million years. And then working with the Guardians since the world began. I can never tell what he'll do next. A million years. Oh, not measuring by the sun, of course. Well, you're not in time anymore, Jerry. We're living in eternity. No time, changing colors, no distance. That's right. Well, Jerry, you and I better get going. Oh, wait a minute. There are a couple of things I'd like to ask. A couple of things? Uh, yeah, like what, like what happened. What do you mean, Jerry? Well, I mean up there. One minute everything was great, smooth as smoke, and the next minute... Well, next minute I'm dead. What happened, Angel? Your plane ran into something, Jerry. Ran into something? A sparrow. A sparrow? Well, how did a sparrow get way up there? Well, this morning, the sparrow got caught in an updraft under a cumulus cloud formation. She was on the way back down when you ran into her. Hmm. So I killed the sparrow, and the sparrow killed me. And the sparrow was already dead when you came along, Jerry. Too much altitude. Yeah, but look, how could a sparrow... Well, she came in through your air intake, broke one of the blades in a compression turbine. It went out of balance, and vibration did the rest. <laughs> you, uh, you people really mark the sparrow's fall, don't you? Mm. I wish... What do you wish, Jerry? Well, I, I was testing that plane. I, I wish I could tell them what happened so they could change the design or something. And they'll find out from the wreckage. Oh, they will? They'll fix it. Well, you've done your job. Don't worry about it. Now, what else was bothering you? Well, I... Well, what I mean is I... Well, just for a moment, I'd like to see how my mother's taking what happened. Suppose we could do that? You'd like to see her? Could we? Well, we certainly can. Just put your hand on my arm. Like that? That's right. And just like that, we were home. We walked right through the doors without opening them and right into the kitchen where Mother was frying bacon and eggs for breakfast. Mom moved happily from stove to table and back again. She didn't seem at all worried. I knew then that she hadn't heard yet about my crash. She was humming as she walked right through the angel toward the kitchen door. Oh, Billy, Alice, breakfast is ready. You'll have to hurry. Coming, Mother. Okay, Mom. Oh, oh, Mr. Adams, you frightened me. Good morning. Morning. Some extra bread today? Um, yes. Two loaves, please. Thank you. Uh, won't you have a cup of coffee? No, thanks. I gotta get along. Beautiful morning. Look at the way the sun comes through them trees. Just like a sit in the moving pictures. Oh, it's a beautiful, clear blue sky. That means good flying weather. Oh, you mean for Jerry? Mm-hmm. He'll be home tonight. What's he up to now? Oh, he's bringing some kind of a test plane in from the coast. He is? Mm-hmm. Margaret Winters. If that boy knowed how much you loved him, he wouldn't be doing a dangerous job like that. Oh, now, he's a good boy, yeah, Mr. Yeah, but Adams. I know that, but then... And he has to take the best job he can find... You know, he's saving up for his wedding. Oh, I forgot that. Yeah, he's all grown up. Well, that's how it is. We're here with you today. Then they grow up. 
And then they're gone, and they, two loaves? Two will be fine. Bye. Goodbye, Mr. Adams. I saw new meaning for the simple things that were said and done. In life, it seemed I hadn't time to notice him. But now my mom's place in our home took on new importance. I was struck by the beauty of her face. Well, she, she wasn't a handsome woman, but now I could see the goodness written there. It was reflected in the little things she did. Making breakfast, talking to the old baker, Pop Adams, washing dishes, and loving all of us. Somehow, I, I never felt the full force of her love before. I wish... I wish I could go over to her and tell her. No, Jerry. I wouldn't try to disturb her. Why don't you hop up here on the ironing board with me? Uh, I'm all right. Just, just that the... Well, there are a number of things I wish I had done to make her happy. You know, little kindnesses and remembrances. But I know she understands. It's her patience that makes her beautiful. Her gentle understanding and the sweetness in her voice. Billy, are you up? Alice, breakfast is getting cold. You'll be late for school if you don't hurry. Oh, Mother, I simply have to have a new dress. I don't have a decent thing to wear. Now, what about the blouse and skirt you got last week? Doesn't it have that, that, oh, that new something or other you've been talking about for a month? Oh, but after all, Mother, I can't wear that to school. It's too, too, uh, well, you understand, don't you, Mother? I'm a high school senior, and everybody expects us to look, well... Yes, yes, I understand. But let's do a little thinking about it later. Oh, but, Mother... Hey, Mom. Do you all have to hurry? Billy, you're interrupting. Oh, gosh, sis, can't a fella even say hello? Please don't begin the day arguing. Good morning, son. I'm not arguing. I just told Billy not to interrupt. That will be all now, Alice. Billy, did you say grace? Yes, Mom. Quick to myself. What about saying it slow for yourself and the Lord? Yes, Mom. Uh, bless me, Lord, and all these gifts which we have, and thank you, too. <laughs> well, that's mixed up, Billy. But you look like a little angel when you act that way. Oh, Mom, I don't want to be an angel. I want to be a flyer like Jerry. Well, when Jerry was your age, he didn't want to be a flyer. I bet he didn't want to be an angel. No, I guess not. But Jerry is a good boy. Always dependable. Always, Mother? Well, nearly always. But Billy's a good boy, too, Mother. Hey, sis, you feeling sick or something? <laughs> no, Billy, I think you're sweet. I bet you want me to do something for you. Well, I was wondering if you'll have the time after your paper route. I bet you have another sorority meeting. No, it's the debate club. And I won't have time in my dresses at the cleaners, and you could... Okay, okay. I'll think it over. It was too bad Billy couldn't see what the angel and I were waiting for. There was a struggle of two thoughts going through his mind. And his plain face of a boy took on light lines like the faint etchings that an artist makes when he begins to paint. Then suddenly the lines changed and a brightness lightened his face. He smiled as though there were a warm, generous feeling inside of him. Okay, sis. I think I'll be able to manage it now. Oh, thanks, Billy. See, Mother, didn't I tell you he's a darling? Yes, I see. And what about you? Oh, Mom. Well, I know she wants to go to the school dance tonight. <laughs> well, you're very kind to help her, son. No, no, I figured it out. You see, Jerry's away most of the time, and he'll be getting married to Margie. And I'm the only man in the house, well, so it's just one of those things. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, I guess I better get going. Bye, Billy, and thanks. Bye, Mom. Bye, Alice. Bye, son. Jerry, you see how much fun it is being an angel? Yeah. I guess when I was alive, I just didn't see things the way they really are. Well, perhaps it's not too easy. Well, I don't know. It looks very easy now. And that's because you're just standing by and watching. Maybe. But it seems wonderful to have Billy's chance to be kind and generous and make people happy. Can you see now how people grow more beautiful? You know, it seems so simple. I don't know why I never thought of it when I was alive. It's time for us to be going. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it is. I didn't know where we were going, yet leaving was, well, it wasn't like saying goodbye because I had a realization that we'd be separated only a short time. Well, true, I had a feeling of regret for what I might have done, but I felt happy remembering the little that I had accomplished. 
If, if only Margie would understand. If only... You're thinking she won't understand. Yeah. You'd like to go down to Grand Central Station and see Margie. Oh, well, you know where she works? Yes. That you used to ride into the city with her some mornings and that you'd see her to the ticket window four, where she is right now. Oh, say, you know a lot about Margie. Yes. Yes, quite a lot. Oh. You seem to forget I've been around you 24 hours a day. Well, then you know how much I really love her. Yes. It's true love, Jerry, because you respect her. Yeah. You know, it's very strange. I should be sad because we were going to be married next month. And yet... Yet you're happy. But that's only because you know your love for her is unchanged. Just a little different. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess that's why I'm so happy now. Well, here we are. This is quite a busy place. <laughs> well, everyone's in a hurry. Hey, what do you read? What do you read? Get your afternoon paper. First edition. Oh, please, Lord, let me sell them fast this afternoon. I'm getting awful tired. Hey, did you hear what he said? Yes, Jerry. A little prayer. Well, I never knew people prayed like that. You did it yourself sometimes, Jerry. I did. Sure, nearly everybody does it at times. Just listen over there. Oh, you mean the red cap? Yes. Oh, Lord, Lord. I don't know what people put in their bags that makes them so heavy. And I ain't going to say anything to nobody but you about it. But, Lord... Please give me a little patience with this lady that has me toting these things back and forth because she can't make up her mind where she's going. And, Lord, I hope you won't mind if I ask you to send her a little inspiration about a good tip because I've been wasting a powerful lot of time with that lady. And you know I was just a poor working man. <laughs> well, that's a practical prayer if ever I heard one. Yes, but sincerity is what God counts most. I can see now what Mother meant when she wouldn't come into the city. Yes, it must be confusing with everyone rushing and racing around you. I guess I was just as bad as anyone. It all seems so unnecessary now. I don't know why we delayed, but instead of going over to Margie at the window, the angel walked through the crowds around the station. And without question, I followed behind her. It was interesting to watch the reactions of different people to the little things around them. I was getting kind of impatient. Don't be impatient, Jerry. I don't see much purpose in wandering around here when we came down to see Margie. Oh, but there is. You'll find out. Besides, doesn't this chance to see people help you? Help me? How? Oh. To see the life you led in a new way. Oh. Is this kind of a, a judgment of myself? Yes, you can call it that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I understand. Then we're ready to see Margie. We came into the ticket booth where Margie was working. The angel and I perched on the ledger in which she kept accounts. We watched her selling tickets and making change. Now I knew with a wonderful certainty why I loved her. There was a charm in her whole manner, a goodness and beauty in her face. She is beautiful, Jerry. Well, I wish she could hear you say that. But you know, she wasn't always like that. The exterior beauty is something she's always had. It's the interior beauty I'm talking about. It's the kind of beauty most pleasing to God. Margie wasn't always like this. You helped her more than you know. I helped her. No human being is perfect, but Margie is closer to it now than she's ever been. Trying to live up to your respect for her. Trying to be worthy of your love for her. Well, that never occurred to me. I had trouble with you, too, till you met her. You improved together. Yeah, she really helped me a great deal, didn't she? More than you know. She gave you encouragement, love, and understanding. Understanding? She knew you better than you knew yourself. You asked me if she helped you. Jerry, if it hadn't been for Margie, I might have lost you. Might have lost me? Meeting Margie was no accident. God gives people the things they need to save their souls. And it's up to the person to use the gift wisely. If you needed a million dollars to save your soul, he would have given it to you. You needed Margie. Thanks, Margie. I didn't realize how much... How very much being in love with you meant to me. I only wish I could tell you. I only wish I could say... Thank you, Margie. You know, I, I think in some way she heard or felt what I was trying to say because she smiled and brushed her hair back with her fingers. For a moment, she seemed completely happy. Then the customer in front of her began to fidget and she counted out his change. Eighty, ninety, one dollar. 
You have ten minutes before the gates open, sir. Your train leaves on track nine. Oh, what time is it now? Oh, only 4.30. Come on, time, go by. Jerry's coming tonight. If Mr. Brown would only drop by a few minutes early, maybe I could meet him at the field. Then, then I wouldn't have time to get ready. I wonder if I dare do my hair and surprise him. <laughs> what was it Jerry called me the first time he saw me with my hair and curlers? Miss Chopped Iron of 1953. <laughs> oh, there's so much to do. I wish I weren't so tired. Hope I don't look tired. Come on, clock. Say five o'clock. Say five o'clock. <laughs> Hey, Angel, you know something? What, Jerry? I never realized before why Margie used to be so tired some evenings. When she wanted to stay home and I felt like going out, I'd get annoyed at her. Now I know what Mom meant when she said I needed patience and understanding if we were going to be happy together. How oh, but I love her. I love her even more now. I, I didn't think it'd be like this, that I'd go on loving her after I was dead. Jerry, you'll be in love with her all eternity. I'm glad of that. That's the way I'd like it. You know, I was afraid that after I was dead... <laughs> You'd be a ghost and haunt a house? Well, yeah, something like that. I never thought it would well, be as real as this. It's more real now than when you were alive. Yeah. Everything seems so easy to understand now. If, if only... You want to know what will happen when they get word about you at home? Yeah, I, I'd like to be there. Uh, maybe I could... I know. You'd like to help. Well, isn't there anything we could do? I mean, if I could... Well, if I could just talk to them, tell them how happy I am... I don't think so. We'll be there when Margie gets home. And we were. When we walked up the path to our home, Mom was sitting on the front porch. She was rocking slowly in the old chair that was always hers. She had the open telegram lying in her lap. There were tears on her cheek that she dried quietly with the edge of her apron. Alice was sitting near her. Beside her, Billy was kneeling, holding her hand. Mother, you remember when Dad died two years ago? You remember what Jerry said? What was that, son? He said he'd be the man of the house and that he'd take care of you. <laughs> yes. Yes, I remember. And he did. He took care of all of us. Well, that's what I wanted to say, Mom. Because... Now I'll take care of you. You know that. Yes, son. I know you will. Oh, well, Mom, you said that God wanted it to be this way, and he has his own wise plan. Yes, yes, I know. It's only... And, the... Mother, I'll take care of you, too. I'll see that... Mom, there's Marjorie. Oh, be... don't say anything to her at first. I'll go down and meet her. Hello, Margie. Hello, Billy. Why so solemn and serious? You look like you had all the troubles of the world on your shoulders. But every day you're getting to look more like Jerry, and that's a big compliment. Thank you, Marjorie. Did Jerry get home yet? No, no. Mom's sitting out on the porch. Do you want to go up and sit with her for a while? Yes, and you can keep me company, solemn face. And that was the moment when the angel got the sudden bright idea of breaking into this program. So we came into the studio here and sat up on the microphone. But I guess no one around knows anything about it because now well, the music continues undisturbed. But it was the angel's idea of telling Margie and Mum, Alice and Billy just what happened. And I guess anyone else who tuned in could hear it too. No, not everyone, Jerry. Only those who would be made happy by listening. And what? And will Margie be happy? Yes, very happy. I won't lose her? No, Jerry, you won't lose her. When... When will she... Die? Yeah. That's not my department, Jerry. But when her time does come, it will be a gentle death. Margie. Margie, when it comes, don't be afraid. It's not hard to die, really, and... And I'll be waiting for you. I'll be waiting till you come, darling. Jerry, it's time to go now. Yeah, yeah okay. Good night, Mom. Margie, Alice, and Billy. 
Good night. You have been listening to a special half hour of sitting music. We hope you've been able to dream with us, to dream your own thoughts into a world of new hope. This program came to you through the courtesy of Jerry's Angel. This is Jimmy Durante again, stepping out of character for a minute to talk to you now as host of Family Theater. We gave you a story tonight, a radio play about a family. We people of the radio and movie industries, and that includes everybody from the big shot who owns the station down to the last kid who's knocking at the door of a talent agency. We got something at stake, and that's the American family. Of course, I don't preach to people. I'm only supposed to be a comedian. Anyway, what I want to say is this. There's nothing more beautiful in this life than a happy family. I mean it. And maybe we should remember that sacrifice, patience, hardship, all these things, together with robins and sunsets, joys and laughter, make a happy family. We can't have these things unless we look back and up, up to God. That's why we say, pray. Pray to God as a family. That means getting our kids around us, in the parlor, in the kitchen. It means just for a few minutes, lifting our hearts and minds to God. Too many families are unhappy these days. Too many families are breaking up. These families don't know that a family that prays together stays together. Good night, and God bless you. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Stolen Symphony, starring Hugh O'Brien and Anne Francis. Jimmy Durante was your host. Others in our cast were Marion Richmond, Margaret Brayton, Ralph Moody, Norma Jean Nilsson, and Martin Dean. The script was written by James Reuter and Mark Carney, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by Robert Hugh O'Sullivan, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us this Sunday over most of these stations when Family Theater will present a special hour-long program, The Thanksgiving Hour, starring Ethel Barrymore, Pat O'Brien, Keith Brazell, Perry Como, Bing Crosby, John Brownlee, Aileen Dumas-Lee, and Marina Koshetz. Check your radio log for time. Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America.